What's going on everyone? My name is Aaron and this is Dad.0. Oh, today I wanted to do a follow-up review to my Apple MacBook Air M1. I did an initial review back when it came out and I loved it back then. It's been a few months so I wanted to do a follow-up, do more of a longer term review. Just tell you what I'm liking, how it's been performing, how it's held up, the durability, and that sort of thing. So let's get into it. And if at any point you want to skip ahead in the video, check out the chapters I built into the timeline below so you can quickly get to what you want to see. So just to recap, I got the Apple MacBook Air base model. Again, this has the Apple M1 chip with the 8-core CPU, 7-core GPU, 16-core neural engine, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage, has that Retina display with True Tone, has the Magic Keyboard, Touch ID, and two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. And back when I initially reviewed this MacBook Air, even though it's the base model, it was still my favorite MacBook, and in fact my favorite laptop that I've ever used. So the first thing I want to cover is just exactly what I'm still loving about this MacBook Air. And the first thing has to be the performance of this M1 chip. It is just extremely fast and it handles anything that I put it through, no problem. Multitasking is fast, clean, no stuttering. I can have hundreds of tabs open in Chrome while doing emailing, playing in Photoshop, or doing anything else, and this thing handles it no problem. And I know that a lot of you aren't video editors like us YouTubers are, but if you are, I edit all my footage on Final Cut Pro on this device, 4K footage, Again, it handles it no problem. And this was honestly something I was a little bit worried about long term because there is no fan in these MacBook Airs. So even though these M1 chips have really high benchmarks, I was a little bit worried that when it started to get pushed a little bit that the heat would make it slow down a little bit. And I'm sure there is thermal throttling going on, especially when I'm doing 4K edits or doing a lot of gaming, but none that I found really noticeable. And again, this laptop has stayed super cool throughout, even when I'm doing those tasks. So overall, the performance has just been excellent. I can't speak highly enough about it. And speaking of those thermals, that's another one of the things that I really love about this MacBook Air. I don't know if I have OCD about fan noise or what, but anytime that I get a laptop that has super loud fan noise, it just really bugs me. So I've always been looking for a fanless design that also has good processing power. And really, there's not much out there if you're looking for a fanless design. But this laptop is that perfect mixture of power plus a fanless design. And again, you don't have to worry about pushing this thing and getting it too hot. Like I said, I've pushed this thing 4K editing, gaming, and all those types of tasks. And it has gotten maybe a little bit warm, a little bit warmer than normal, but by no means hot. Another thing that I'm just loving is the battery life. If I'm just doing normal tasks on this, just normal multitasking, web browsing, emailing, using light software, I can easily get 10, 11, 12 plus hours on a charge, which is the most I've had on a laptop probably ever. And before, when I'm editing videos on a laptop, I would almost always have to keep it plugged in because you're going to run through a battery really fast doing 4K edits. But I can still get five, six hours of working in Final Cut Pro and Photoshop on a charge, which is really great. And again, I don't want to make it sound like everyone is a video editor, but what I'm trying to show you is that you can really push this thing and still get great battery life. The display is also gorgeous, 13.3 inch, 2560 by 1600 native resolution, 227 pixels per inch, has 400 nits of brightness, P3 wide color gamut, and True Tone technology. This isn't the highest resolution display that you're going to find out there, or the brightest, but when using this in dark mode, I think the contrast just looks really sharp. All the colors just pop, and I really like this resolution because it's that combination of just a really great display, text looks clear, colors are vivid, plus it also gives you great battery life. Some other things that I'm loving, the speakers are fantastic. Apple's kind of known for just great speakers on their MacBooks. This one's no exception. I also love the Magic Keyboard. Really nice key travel and the backlighting looks fantastic. And then the trackpad, again, Apple's kind of known for great trackpads. This one's nice and big. It's very responsive. I oftentimes don't even need to use a mouse because I love using this so much. So you can see, while I'm loving almost every aspect of this computer, there are just a few things that I would love to see added to the next generation. I think one thing that a lot of people point out is the 720p FaceTime HD camera on this. Listen, like I said in the first review, 
I personally don't think this is a big deal. Would it be nice to have a higher resolution, better camera? Of course. But I think it's more than fine for most video conferencing that you're going to be doing. And to kind of piggyback off that, I would love to see Face ID move to the MacBooks. It'd be so nice to just lift up the lid and just automatically be into the computer. That's not to say Touch ID doesn't work perfect. This works every single time and it's really great to use to log into your computer and to pay for things and download things. But I mean Windows Hello has been around for how long now and it's just super fast and super simple to get into your computer. So I'm not sure why Apple hasn't done that with its MacBooks yet. Maybe there's just not a high demand for it just yet and people are just fine with Touch ID. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments if you'd love to see Face ID on the MacBooks. Another thing is the ports. I'm personally fine with two ports. It's not a big deal to me. It would be nice to have one more port on the other side of the MacBook or separate the two ports or that there's one on each side. There's been a bunch of times where it would just be nice to have a USB-C port on the right side of the computer so I don't have to run a cord all the way around to the other side. And then the last thing I'll mention is the bezels. While I don't think that they're huge by any means, I do think that they could be trimmed up a little bit to kind of compete with the Dell XBS lineup, the HP Spectre lineup, and the other thin and light laptops that have really thin bezels. And again, most of these aren't necessarily bad things about the MacBook. In my opinion, most of these are just fine, but if I were to have an ideal computer, these are just a few things that I would add. In terms of durability and how this is held up, listen, this is gonna be kind of a case by case basis and how you use your laptop. If you're taking this on the go a lot, it might get dinged up a little bit more than someone that just uses this at home. And I'm the type that does use this at home. I've taken it on the go a few times, but I'm also very gentle with it. So this still looks brand new. A lot of people ask about the keyboard just because Apple had that issue with the butterfly switches they used to use. The keyboard has held up just fine. There's been no issues at all and I still love it. They are black keys so they do collect smudges a lot so you're gonna have to kind of wipe this down occasionally but again the keyboard is sturdy. Trackpad there's been no issues at all. It's been very responsive. Touch ID again it has worked every single time. I can't remember the last time it didn't work. The screen has no scratches or marks on it at all and that can be kind of the pro of not having a touch screen is that there isn't a ton of smudges all over the screen all the time. It's normally pretty clear and untouched. And then the outside, I have the Space Gray model. This still looks, like I said, brand new. I can't find any scratches or dents on it. The logo still looks clean and everything looks great. So if you've been on the fence about getting one of the new MacBooks with the M1 chip, you just don't want to be one of the first ones to do it. You want to wait a couple months, see how it's performed, see what the reviewers say. I can personally tell you that I still love this machine a couple months later. I think it's getting better. In fact, I'm loving it more as I get used to working with it. That's not to say that there isn't still a few hiccups with that new M1 chip. There's still some compatibility issues that I run in from from time to time, and that's to be expected, but for the most part, this is still my favorite laptop. This is still my go-to laptop and what I use every single day. And like I said, it's that combination of power, a fanless design, a thin and light laptop, a great display, and a great keyboard that makes this my favorite laptop. And not only do I think it's awesome now, but I think it'll get even better in the coming months when more developers develop software and apps compatible and takes full advantage of this M1 chip. It's going to be really exciting to see what you can do with this in the coming months. So if you're interested in it, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you for everyone that watched till the end. If you like this video, press that like button. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it guys. Also subscribe for more content I'm coming out with soon. Thanks again guys. I'll catch you on the next video.